Stop making these 10 Pokemon investing mistakes and stay till the end of the video because tip number 10 is the most valuable tip that you can learn on this list. Starting off with tip number one is keep your product sealed. If you keep your product sealed, you're taking the gamble out of the equation and you're always gonna get a better return on your short-term and long-term investments with Pokemon. So keep your product sealed. So that takes us into tip number two, which is avoid buying damaged or unsealed product. The reason for this is if you're investing, it will always yield a lower value. I just saw recently there was a sale for an ETB case of Lost Origins, sold for $280, and then open box, there was no damage, all 10 of the ETBs were still sealed, but it sold for $50 less. So guys, don't unseal your cases, don't open up the box, don't buy open box or unsealed products because you're always gonna get a lower profit. Tip three on this list is make sure that you are buying an investment or a collectible. Because it's very easy in this hobby, especially if you are personally involved and not just a reseller, if you are a personal collector like myself, it can be very easy to buy something with the intent to invest in it and sell it in the future or collect it. But where the problem arises is when you buy something for an investment and you decide to open it up, and I'm sure that we've, most of us have done this, and I, I know I have, is I bought something with the intent of investing in it and selling it, and I decided to open it up and just collect it. Of course, this is a personal decision that you have to make, but I think that it's very important when you're learning to invest better is making sure of what is an investment and what is collecting. So that takes us to tip number four, which is branch out. Cast your net wide, as some say. Why limit yourself? Because at the end of the day, if you buy into something really hard and it doesn't really go up in value and it actually goes down in value, then you're gonna do worse on your profit margins and your investment overall. And you're gonna have to wait a long time before it comes back up, or you might just have to sell it as soon as possible and just hope that you can get some of your money back because sometimes I've seen these sets, they continue to go down and down and down and you think that they're gonna maintain a value a little bit better, but they just go down and down and down. So branch out. Don't just buy singles. Don't just buy sealed product. You know, buy wherever you can and wherever you're interested in buying and wherever you're knowledgeable in buying because if you buy into one thing, you're probably going to be gambling. You're gonna be gambling and you're, there's gonna be a lot more risk if you just buy into one thing. And really when I hear a, a person saying, you know, buy this set, this set's gonna be huge. You know what I hear? I hear FOMO. And typically FOMO means the price is gonna get driven up at first and then it's gonna crash. And there's only been so few instances where the FOMO has actually held up. So anyways, that brings us to tip number five, which is keep your personal feelings out of it. Whatever it may be, whether you're deciding to invest in something that you personally like, or whatever it is, or if you're buying a collection or buying online, keep your personal feelings out of it because you're gonna make poor decisions if you have your feelings weighing into things because you might put on those rose-colored glasses and you might be seeing things in a better light than it really is. It could lead you to make some poor investing choices. And I would say that this is probably one of the second most important tips on this list, which is keeping your feelings out of it. That brings us to tip number six, which is learn that grading does not always increase the value. That's right, if you buy a card and you spend $20 on that card and you go and send it into grade, it may still be worth $20. And I've seen this happen all the time. I mean, it's happened to me, it's happened to others, and you will buy something and think, this just has to automatically increase in value because I'm getting it graded. But a lot of times it stays the same, especially if it's poor condition. And sometimes I've actually even seen that the value comes down for a card because there's still that kind of veil of, of mystery, if it hasn't been graded yet, of what the condition is. And some people tend to overvalue and overgrade their cards, which is a very bad mistake that you can make when it comes to grading cards. Which this brings us to tip number seven, which is stop overgrading your cards. 
If you think that that card is a nine, make absolutely certain of it. And don't put on those rose colored glasses and see, oh, this could be a 10. This could maybe get by. I see the mark, I see where the error is, and it could possibly get a 10. Don't overgrade your cards. Ask yourself, if this card gets an eight, am I okay with that? Am I going to be doing good on the value? Is it still gonna be worth it to grade that card? You have to think about it in that way. You shouldn't be assuming that it's gonna get a nine or a 10, and then if it doesn't get that, be absolutely destroyed on the values. You need to make sure that you're okay with the worst possible outcome. This brings us to tip number eight, which is stop overvaluing your cards. And this tip works hand in hand with tip number five, because if you have your personal feelings involved, it can be very easy to overvalue a card. Also, another way you can overvalue a card is thinking how much you spent. Listen guys, at the end of the day, what you spent on a card does not matter. All that matters is how much people are willing to spend. That's it. If the last sold for a card, just today actually, I, I had a card that was worth $45 and I thought it was still at that price. I get messaged by a guy and he says, hey, last sale on this card was $20. Would you be willing to do 20? Before I even messaged him actually, I go and I check eBay last sales and I see for a fact that yes, they were selling for $20. And that took me back a second, but at the end of the day, if people are only willing to spend $20 on that card, that's how much it's worth. It's not about how much I spent on the card, it's not about how much I spent to grade it, it's about how much it's selling for. And I told him, sure, I'll sell it to you for 20 because that was how much it was worth. So stop overvaluing your cards. Just because you paid a certain amount doesn't mean it's worth that much. So just remember, at the end of the day, it's all about whatever people are willing to spend on that card. So don't overvalue your card. Next up, tip number nine is time your buy-in. There can be extreme market lows for sets. And typically I've seen that it's after a reprint occurs. So if you can time your buy-in correctly with these modern sets, you can get them at a market low and it'll be a great investment in the future because it's only up from there. Unless, of course, it's like reprinted again. There are different circumstances and I can't speak for every set that after a reprint, it's gonna be the all-time low. But I have seen many instances where after a reprint, it's really cheap and then several months or years later, then it starts going back up again. And that's just what happens, you know? And then there's times where the FOMO is really high for a set and you're gonna see that the prices are way high. So if you're looking to invest, don't buy when everyone's saying, buy this set, you know? Because there's gonna be a lot of FOMO, you know, like I talked about earlier, which is that fear of missing out. And of course there are anomalies and I can't speak for everything on this, but timing your buy-in is a huge tip. Lastly, tip number 10 on this list, my most important tip for you guys is learn to be patient. This is the most valuable tip on this list because it applies to everything with this hobby, okay? You can learn to be patient when buying, you can learn to be patient when opening up your products, you can learn to be patient when you're selling the products because it could go up in value even more than it already has for certain sets. If you can learn this aspect of this hobby to be patient, then my goodness, then you're worlds ahead from so many other collectors and investors because patience is absolutely key with this hobby, especially if you're looking to invest. So guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you for tuning in. I did wanna let you know that we've still got that December giveaway going on for that Roaring Moon EX box. Looking forward to drawing a winner very soon for that. Got a lot of entries for it, and I'm very excited to give that away to one lucky winner. But anyways, thank you for tuning into this video. Let me know which of those tips was your favorite from this video, and let me know any of your tips down below in the comment section, because I'd be really interested in talking to one another and figuring out what are some better tips that we can do to improve our collecting and investing? Because that's what I wanna make this channel about. Us bouncing 
different ideas and thoughts across each other and figuring out how we can become better investors and collectors and just looking to better the community and not be screwing each other over and trying to get you know low ball deals and low ball offers and overvaluing our cards and Basically, I just want us to get better at this hobby. Because that's what this channel is about. It's about becoming better investors and collectors. And I just love being able to talk with you guys. So let me know which one of those tips you liked and if you've got any extra bonus tips that you got for me. Anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.